member posting the superintendent's position is Jose Palma. Would you please state your name and home address when you approach the microphone? Good evening, uh, member of the school committee and everybody in the room. Uh, my name is Jose Palma and I live on 476 Summer Street, Berlin. I have been a, re a lead resident for the last 10 years. Uh, I had two kids going to public school, one in fifth grade and another one in first grade. I'm here today as part of the new link parent organizing for a better education a group that believes that parents should have more participation in, in the superintendent hire pro, hiring process. But I'm not here today to talk only about the problems. I think that everybody in this room knows, knows them, and I'm sure elected officials official also have heard them before. Posting or not posting the position I think it will make a difference maybe now, but it's not going to make a difference in the future. So I think that I am in that middle ground. But in our group, and I also believe that the first step to improve our education system, it is not only about posting a position or not, and also, but instead incorporating new tools that can help us to make sure parents can participate during the hiring process. Therefore, we suggest that incorporating the new superintendent evaluation tool recommended by the Massachusetts Department of Elementary and Secondary Education into the superintendent's contract is the right direction to go. I hope the school committee will think about it and will incorporate the evaluation tool in the contract, knowing that that decision will help the school committee to evaluate the superintendent in the future. It will also help to the, to the superintendent to keep record and document about his or her job. But more importantly, it will give the opportunity to every parent with kids in Link Public School the opportunity to raise their voice in their concern, but also be part of the solution too. After all, we all want the best education for our kids and for every kid in the city of Lynn. I am sure everybody in this room is here tonight because of that. Let's work together and let's improve the Lynn education system. Thank you. Against posting the superintendent's position is Jean Constantino. Good evening. My name is Jean Constantino. I'm the principal at Lynn Classical High School. I've been teaching, guidance counseling, vice principal, and a principal in Lynn for 36 years. As I spoke before, uh, previously, I feel that Dr. Latham has done an outstanding job. We talk about accountability. Lynn is much, much improved than where we were several, several years ago. We have had professional development under Dr. Latham, unheard of in previous years because of different budgetary constraints. But our teachers are better teachers today since Dr. Latham came on board. Our department heads, our administrators, are better administrators since Dr. Latham came on board. Dr. Latham had a public evaluation, which was done here. You voted for Dr. Latham to have a contract. And I feel that that was the right thing to do. I'm also not afraid of Dr. Latham. I'm at that magical 80%. I can retire any time, so she's not the host to me on my job. But I'm staying here because of the leadership, because I love my job. And if I didn't love my job, 
I could walk away tomorrow. One last thing. I've been involved in my 36 years with the budget where we had devastating cuts twice in my career. This last career, this last devastating budget cut, Dr. Latham brought us through that in a compassionate way when we had to lose teachers. We came through that. Not once did she cut where she hurt kids. She did the best she could to keep class sizes and to keep our schools functioning, and she did an outstanding job. So you did your job. I, I agree with what you did, and I don't think that we should host the superintendent job. Thank you. Next to speak in favor of posting the superintendent's position is Esperanza Herrera. Yo quiero decir, mi nombre es Esperanza Herrera, estoy aquí representando la voz de padres latinos. Es una voz que yo diariamente escucho. And is this is Herrera. I, I believe we may want to have an interpreter available for you. If Mrs. Let Herrera. me ask you first, how many of you understood what I said? I understand most of it. How many of you understood what I was saying? I didn't. How many of you understood what I was saying? That Mrs. is my Mrs. point. Okay, Mrs. That Herrera. That is my point. I am speaking for the parents. And that's why fine, I'm here. and that's why I asked you if you would and like a translator. No, I don't need a translator. What I need is to be able to speak for the parents who are not here tonight. I am speaking about posting a position for the superintendent, not because I have any personal involvement with the personal personalities of the people here. I am saying it because it is the democratic thing to do. It is the way to have people have an input. Many times parents, especially looking at parents, Cambodian parents, Samoan parents, Nepal parents, are rendered invisible, or they render themselves invisible by a system that not, cannot meet their needs, a system that is struggling with fiscal shortages, a system that is struggling to maintain teachers, brand new teachers who leave the education field within two years of becoming brand new teachers. I am speaking about a city of Lynn, a school system, a school such as this, Lynn Tech, 30, more than 30 years ago. The principal of Lynn Tech refused federal money, of which I was the chair of public law, federal money, vocational money, that was coming to Lynn Tech and Classical High School. Refused the money because he did not want to take any Latino kids or black kids into LTI. I've been around a long time. I'm probably older than whoever thinks they're older. Okay? So that one person single-handedly almost shut down the entire city of land. Because if you refuse one cent of federal money, you refuse all money. And so they had until noon time to say yes, they would take the Latino kids and they would take the black kids to LBTI. Because that would have shut down every single federal cent that came into the city of land. Now, moving forward to the now, LBTI is over 70% Latino student population. I work in education. I'm a member of the faculty. 
I'm a member of the union. I work in the Latino community. I assist Cambodian families. I assist Russian families. I assist any family that comes to me or member that comes to me because they need education. I chair the Committee of the Indian Hispanic Scholarship Selection Committee, even though I'm not a member of the board. I am honored that they give me that privilege and responsibility. I help raise money, but I also see the dropouts. I also see the people that are struggling. I convinced my daughter, who grew up in Lynn, and was educated in the public school system and in Salem public school system, to go to Lynn Tech. Because I said, daughter, they need you back. They don't have a Latina working there. They don't have any Latina scientists that can motivate women to go and stay in school and seek an education. We come to this country because this is the way to get an education. This is the way to have freedom. This is the way we learn that we have a voice, that we can vote, and that our vote counts. And that is the reason why I'm saying that the superintendent's position and any other position that has so much power over the lives of the parents and the children and the faculty and the administrators and all of us, but mostly over the children. That position needs to be posted, it needs to be open, it needs to be visible, and as many people as want to or can participate ought to be given the opportunity to participate. Not because I'm here to, you know, go after somebody. I don't need to do that. I can train leaders in this community, and I've been doing it for a long time. But because of my standing in the community and the state, I am able to have parents come and say, this is happening with my child. They're telling me I have to move him to the school because he's got special needs and I have to medicate him. What am I going to do? I have to drop out of college because my child has needs. I have to drop out of college because I can't dedicate enough time to my studies. When we don't train the parents and we don't educate people, then the next time that another person comes here and speaks to you in your native language, and you have nobody here that understands, how are you going to be able to say, this is what you need to do so that we can do the best for our children, your child? This is what you need to know so that your child can get the best education that our qualified teachers are prepared and able to give them. How are you going to do that? Look at you. Look at me. Look at the people in the audience. I want to know, where are the Cambodians? Where are the Latinos? Why don't they know that this is going on? Why don't they know? So I thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. And again, I say, any position, whether it's elected, or whether it's appointed, or whether it's assigned, should be open for discussion. And the superintendent's position, which is ultimately responsible for the education of our children, ought to be advertised. Thank you very much. My name is Donna Whalen, and I am a fifth grade teacher at the Brickett Elementary School. I am also a lifelong Lynna. Born in Lynn, graduate of Lynn Public Schools, homeowner in Lynn, and the proud daughter of a retired Lynn school teacher. I am here this evening in support of Dr. Latham. In my 23 years of teaching, I have worked for many administrators. I am honored to say that I work for Dr. Latham. I have seen firsthand a new computer lab added to my school, a smart board 
installed in my classroom, an updated curriculum under the leadership of Dr. Latham. This year, my class won a national science competition due to the support and encouragement Dr. Latham was so willing to give us. As a teacher with many years of experience, I see our schools headed in the right direction. I ask you to support Dr. Latham and allow her to continue the work I see firsthand in the classroom. As someone who is not only a Lynn public school teacher, but a citizen of Lynn, who cares deeply about our city, we are headed in the right direction. Please allow Dr. Latham to continue to lead us. Thank you. in favor of posting the superintendent's position. Therefore, the next speaker will also be speaking against posting the superintendent's position, and that is Mary Dill. Good evening, Madam Mayor, Dr. Latham, and committee members. Uh, my name is Dr. Mary Dill. I reside at 63 Castle Road in Hunt. I have worked in Lynn for many, many years. I was the principal at Tracy School for 11 years, and this is my second full year at Connery School. I have worked at Druid School. I have worked at Reed. I have worked at Ford. I have worked at Tracy, and now I am at Connery. I was also one of those kids at English High School that worked as a substitute. Um, when I was at Salem State, I graduated from English. I went to school three days at Salem and subbed two days. So I've been in many places in this system. I've also worked for many superintendents. My dad taught with Dr. Latham at English High School for years and years. He'd be very proud of me sitting here in support of Dr. Latham. I have worked under Dr. Latham for many um, changes in the school department when we were starting our performance improvement mapping at Tracy School, Dr. Latham was working with the state, looking at data. She came and worked in all the elementary schools to start a change in what we were doing in the schools to turn around the schools so that there was parent involvement, so that we were looking at data, we were looking at goals. That all began with her. That didn't happen until she became part of the administration. Then she became the deputy, and now she is our superintendent. She has worked to keep the class sizes as low as she can. She's taken that budget many times and made some very hard choices that some people feel were not in the best interest of themselves or their specific place in the world. But she has done that so that place people in this school department have had class sizes that are as low as she can make them. A lot of people have been um, talking about the SPED department and how, that she, how she has not done anything to help their particular <coughs> situations. I know Dr. Latham has worked endlessly with Mrs. Michelle Nino in the special ed department. They've worked tirelessly to try and make sure the teachers that are working in the special ed classrooms, the .40 classes that we have in our buildings have good teachers, sound aids, and the resources that they need. She must work within the guidelines of her budget. We feel, as principals, she's done a very good job with that. The role of the parents here certainly is to advocate for their children, but also Dr. Latham must take into account the decisions of teens, the decisions of the law, and she has to appropriately place students in places that she feels is best. I'm very proud to say Mrs. Deb Smith Walsh, who spoke earlier, has been working with Dr. Latham to build a new Lynn Community Health Center inside Connery School. Dr. Latham, as a Lynn resident, believes that the children deserve to get as much as they can from this system, and that new health center inside Connery will allow our parents to come in during the school day, will allow the students to have services that they need. She has also initiated the wraparound zone, which is going to help children in this city that have non-academic issues they will be dealt with outside of school, 
so when our kids come into school, they can come in ready to learn. One parent here tonight spoke of games in Lynn. I know firsthand, Connery is in what some people feel have a lot of gang areas. Dr. Latham has worked with the Lynn Gang Task Force and with Officer Ferrari, as well as the Chief, in the District Attorney's Office to ensure that the resources are available for our kids and the police officers to help keep our gang out of the schools. Before I went to Connery, it's the first thing I heard of. It's a very tough neighborhood. There are gangs. There are gang members. I will tell you, to this minute, I have never met one. I don't know them. They are not around. They're not near my school. There is nothing around Connery that makes our children unsafe that I have seen. I know there are police reports that happen at night, but it is not happening during the day. The job of the superintendent is widespread, and from what I hear tonight, I feel ter terrible for her because it seems like a very thankless job. As the superintendent, she's given herself over to this district. She's a resident of Lynn. She's a former teacher. She worked with my dad, who also worked in the school department his whole life. Dr. Latham brings to this job something that cannot be found on a job posting. We already have a hardworking superintendent. We don't need a posting to find somebody else. The superintendent has given the two level four principals full support at our schools. She's funded many new initiatives. I will say to you, there are people tonight that have said many times, she says no, she says no. Well, you know what she does, and then if you can convince her or talk to her, she will change her mind if she knows it's in the best interest of our students. First thing I walked into the Connery School asking for was a preschool. They'd never had one. She didn't know if she could fund it. Wasn't positive about it. This year, we have two half-day preschools. They didn't, I didn't even have space in Connery School to have the preschools. Dr. Latham found me space here at Lynn Tech at the Cubby's Den so that our four-year-olds are coming to two preschool sessions. She works, oh, I lost my little space, sorry. She works so hard here to make sure when principals ask for something, if it's in the positive interest of our students, we get it. I don't know how many know, tomorrow commis uh, Commissioner Mitchell Chester is coming to Lynn. He's going to visit Connery and Harrington Elementary Schools with the superintendent because both level fours increased our scores so much in our first year there. Connery made AYP in both English language arts and in math. And yes, we have many, many students from other countries. We have 90% second language students. I have children in my building that literally walked, no lie, from the Himalayas over the mountains, found their way to Tibet. In Tibet, the Catholic Charities found their way to get them into Lynn, Massachusetts, to the Connery District. To this minute, we still don't know how that happened. We've talked to the family. They are so thrilled to be here. They were living in a town with no roads. Dr. So Bill, yes, they I'm, find it. Am I'm sorry I to interrupt. Um, I and you've also much. run out of the seated time as well. Okay. Thank you. Please do not post this position. Thank you. Thank you. Against posting the superintendent's position is Mark Johnston. Again, would you please state your name and home address? I'm Mark Johnston. I live at 341 Linwood Street. Um, I am um, at the front of the classical. I've been in Lynn for 16 years, but I'm actually not here to talk about classical. I'm going to talk about I have four children. And I have an elementary school child, I have a middle school child, I have a high school child, and I have one who's since graduated. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the last three years because everybody was talking about real parents. Well, I'm a real parent. And so um, I want to talk a little bit about my daughter. She goes, she goes to the local um, elementary school near us. And um, she, she was just in a play recently and she got student of the month and her picture was in the paper. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just, there's a lot of opportunities and changes at the elementary level that's happened since all my kids have gone through. The curriculum changes, I mean, my daughter's smart as a whip. And some of the things that they're doing is just absolutely incredible. I'm trying to talk fast here. 
And so I just think that the, the changes that have been implemented in the last three years, as a parent and as an educator, I can see the changes and how important they are and the progress they've made. Now I have my next son, who took three sons, but I finally got a super sports star, and he's at three. And um, I, I can't even begin to tell you the changes over the last three years. I mean, the curriculum, the data, the information going home to parents that allow us to know what's going on, um, allowing us to meet with the teachers. We can email them if we want. We can set up appointments when we want. And I think that whole information that wasn't there when my other son went there is now there. And I think it's, it's very important. And this whole informational change has really progressed in the last three years. Now I want to talk about the pride and joy. My oldest son goes to tech. And you know, three years ago, I would not, I would have said no. Absolutely not. And then, you know, he convinced me, well, why don't you go to the open house? And I went to the open house, and I couldn't believe in the last three years the changes that were here. I, I mean, it's just phenomenal. He's decided to go in the health tech program. And then, um, so I started looking, you know, I monitor his curriculum. He's in the honors program here, and it's phenomenal. I mean, the teachers at tech and what they're doing here, I, I just can't begin to tell you how he's progressed. I mean, I didn't even know he knew what a football was. And somehow, the people at Tech got him interested in football, and he's playing football. Then they got him interested in track. And then they got him interested in swimming. So I think the progression of the, the sports, the incredible academics, I mean, I was worried that I was gonna have to send my, my son to private school because I didn't think he was gonna get what he needed here. And he's, his curriculum is way beyond. They're not only doing our curriculum, I mean, their curriculum that's excelled in the last three years. Some of the material and everything that's been put into place by your leadership team is just absolutely incredible. And I just want you to want to make sure that you don't post a job because I want her around for another at least six years until all my kids are gone because if they are all can have, they have that kind of education, I know that they will do very, very well when they leave. Thank you. up at the beginning of this public hearing to speak against posting the superintendent's position. I am also going to give you uh, three opportunities now to come forward if there's anybody else who would like to speak against posting the superintendent's position. Is there anybody else that would like to come forward? Have you spoken before? Then why don't you come and sign up and you can use your time to do that. Is there anybody else who would like to come forward and speak against the superintendent's position? And this will be the last time I will call for this and after that uh, all of the speakers both for and against will be concluded. Uh, My name is Deborah Shero. I live at 2 Demory Terrace in Peabody, and I am the principal of the Harrington School. And although I don't live in Lynn now, I am a product also of the Lynn Public Schools. I grew up in America Park in West Lynn, and then to Hubby Terrace down by the beach. I went to Callahan School, Brickett School, Eastern Junior High, and Lynn English. So, and I have worked for 27 years in the Lynn Public Schools. The clarification that I want to make, there was a statement earlier that's, uh, that was made saying that the previous Connery principal was moved to Harrington and that his concern was there were safety issues that were not addressed. I take my personal reputation very seriously. Anything that my name goes on, I care about a lot. Safety is number one in my book. Today was a very perfect example of the safety and the safety plan that Dr. Latham and Officer Ferrari have put in place in the Lynn Public Schools. Today was a perfect example of how it worked. We had a very serious fire right up the street. The building is totally condemned. Six families have been affected by that fire. I immediately went into shelter in place, went to find out the address, the, the actual address of the building. We searched who in our school were impacted by this fire. 
Red Cross has been at my school in using a classroom in order to get assistance to these families. We provided them through the help of Dr. Latham and Jay Wari um, with food and resources. They were still at my building at quarter of six, and I'm gonna guess didn't get out of there till about seven o'clock tonight. I just want to say that I think that it is crazy to not renew Dr. Latham's contract or to rescind it. She has, in the years that she has been in the Lynn Public Schools, has been a spearheader in education and in innovations in education. She has implemented so many changes in the Lynn Public Schools that have made our school system one of the top school systems in our area in terms of professional development, in curriculum programs. It's just, I, I've been to a number of workshops and conferences where we sit with other educators from all over the state and they all say Lynn is one step ahead of everyone else. Why we would want to change that is beyond me. Ten years ago, if you had asked me if I were going to be a principal, I would have said you were crazy. But ten years ago, I was a teacher at Harrington Elementary School and was part of a team when that school became underperforming the first time. It was the t first time that I met Dr. Latham and Joanne Roy at that time because they, Dr. Latham was the uh, Department of Education liaison for the Lynn Public Schools and Joanne Roy was working in the curriculum department. Watching their leadership and teaching under Joanne Roy and under the support of Dr. Latham showed me the importance of how you can make so much more of an impact in different roles. That in a classroom, a teacher impacts all the children in their classroom. But when you get out of the classroom and you get into these administrative positions, you can impact so much more. Dr. Latham has impacted a great deal in the Lynn Public Schools, and I do not recommend that you post her job. Thank you. And I apologize, we had one more person who wished to speak, but I didn't see her until she was nearly up the aisle. Would you like to speak? Do you want I'll sign you in. Um, my name is Lorraine Gately and I live at 123 Bacon Road in Massachusetts. I am a lifelong member of Lynn. I work in the schools in Lynn. I teach at Pickering Middle School. I'm the lead science teacher. I am on the committee for technology and education, thanks to Kathy Latham. Um, <coughs> seeing that I took the time to take a course at um, UMass Lowell in engineering and knowing that I had an interest, even though technology is different than science, and giving me that opportunity. I have a wonderful committee. We're working on helping to put lessons on smart boards for teachers in elementary to go on to do elementary technology lessons. I could go on and on and on about all the things she has done. But to post her job, right now when we are moving so far ahead is ludicrous early is i'm sorry i know that there are so many needs in the system and we have so many to meet but i think we're moving in the right direction we really are and i was very <coughs> i don't know kathy you have gotten the biggest distinction of anyone in this room nationwide won that Milliken award and it was a national national Award. That was like everybody in the whole country was looked over for this award. And it was awarded to you, Kathy Latham. And how anyone could take this position of superintendent from you um, or even post it when we already have the national best is beyond me. It's beside me. We have the best of the world. because it's going to help with us understanding students that have different bilingual backgrounds 
by different educational needs. And it takes a while to implement all these things. It really does. It's not like a three-year thing. It could take, you know, I don't know how many years, but we're moving in the right direction. And she hears, the first year she was here, we were starting that summer school, that pilot. And when she got the um, preliminary results, there were tears in her eyes that not every elementary school made AYP, or not every elementary school were passing. There were actual tears in this woman's eyes. And for you to even question whether to renew her contract, to me, come on, be real. We have the best in the nation right now. We have the best. There's no one else out there like her. Thank you very much. Everybody who participated, whether as an audience member or as a speaker, we on the school committee appreciate the civil nature of the discussion and the constructive ideas that were brought forward tonight. And in accordance with the notice of the meeting that was posted, we will now um, conclude this public hearing. Once I declare it closed, we will immediately open with the third special meeting of the school committee. Mayor? Yes, sir. I didn't ask if anybody that was speaking would post on your job could speak again. Thank you. I'm sorry, I missed it. Okay. All right. I uh, therefore declare the public hearing closed.